Hey there YouTube, today we're going to talk about the long mill benchtop CNC machine. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Chris Hartman. I am a CNC enthusiast, a high school teacher at heart, and as you can see, I am in the middle of kitchen renovations. So I'm taking apart my kitchen uh, by myself, which is a little bit challenging, and luckily I see a positive in this. Does anybody else get really excited about taking out a cabinet and then envisioning it in your garage as new storage space? That's what I hope to do today. But today I want to talk to you guys about the CNC long mill that I previously created a video for. Now, my video earlier was called, I regret buying the long mill benchtop CNC MK 2.5. And there was a picture of me doing this, and I thought, oh, well, people will at least come and watch that, thinking that I'm going to say something about the long mill. This was a terrible idea in terms of representing the CNC machine. So I want to point out a couple of comments that were made on my channel, which I appreciate. So Village Idiot 8718 said, so the long mill is not the problem, question mark. And then Doug White, or sorry, Darcy White, I apologize, said, not sure throwing shade on long mill in your title is the best idea here. And I completely agree. If you watch my video, which I recommend going ahead and watching, I talk about buying the CNC machine, thinking that I would build my kitchen cabinets with this machine, only to find out that I don't have enough time to do this and maybe not the skill set in the short period of time that I have. So actually it had nothing to do with the long mill. It's a wonderful machine. I apologize for maybe misleading some of the viewers that uh, watched the video and were like, wait a minute, he doesn't say anything bad about the long mill here. And so today I want to address that. I want to talk to you about the long mill. I'll show you about it. I'll tell you everything that I can say so that people who are purchasing, uh, like myself, six months ago, can have a better idea of what the machine can do or whether it's not the whether or not it's the right machine for you. So I apologize and I thank you for those wonderful comments and let's get right to it. So if you want a CNC machine and you want it really cheap, you can do this method, which is build your own. This was a project from a few years back, quite a few years back where teachers who had zero budget use a couple of their more advanced students and they found some plans online and they basically printed 3d printed all the parts that they could used mdf found these rails from some scrap in our welding shop and they created this wonderful cnc machine and in the end it started cutting and it was working awesome and then they just had trouble with it breaking down or it being a little bit too uh, not rigid enough. So they had more headaches with it than they really ever wanted. So this is an option. You can build your own. But when you have to buy certain materials, print them out 3D, uh, make sure your wiring is all good and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if it's worth your time if you're not mechanically and engineeringly in enabled. So this is an option, but it was short-lived and it is now just inspiration and a dust collector. So this is what I opted for. This is the Long Mill 2.5, the beginner kit. I didn't want to build my own kit. The beginner kit had everything that I needed. I opted for the larger bed. So I got a larger bed, which at the time I was hoping to do cabinets. So I thought I needed the larger bed. I would say that it takes up 
a lot of space in my garage. And if I'm not building cabinets, I definitely would not need this big of a machine. It is nice to have. And now that I have it, I don't have to worry that I want something bigger. So the size, maybe when you're making that decision, you're going to think, do I really need that extra size? I would say for the most part, most people don't. The cost is probably what drew me to this company. Uh, I could create or build this uh, by myself, cutting down on labor costs. Then I would kind of know how the machine works and it, how to fix it, definitely, I hope. So that is one of the reasons why I opted with this company. I would say I paid about $3,500 Canadian for just the machine, the beginner's kit, and then I opted for the laser and it's still in the box at work. I have not taken it out of the box and I have not looked at or thought about using it yet, but it's on the list of things to learn. So $3,500 Canadian, I didn't have any trouble being in Canada. This was in January before any tariffs or anything like that, although I don't think they would affect me. I understand that if you're in the States, you might have a more difficult time getting a machine like this than I do in Canada. It came within a week in a bunch of boxes. I, I shipped it right to work and I started building it there. The additional costs that you don't realize are all the little extras. So there is a cost in building your table. Uh, there's a cost in your vacuum cleaner if you don't have the right hose and you need a bucket and the, the cyclone top for it. So I would say easily with accessories and extra bits and things that I thought I would need, the T-tracks, all of those things, I would say I spent about $1,000 in addition to the to the machine easily probably yeah easily a thousand dollars in additional things that i thought oh i need that like the t-tracks and the and the vacuum cleaner system and i have lots of bits and extra bits that i think i might need so yeah a thousand dollars is an additional amount in terms of performance I would say this machine works quite well, really well, sorry. Quite well is, is an understatement. It works amazingly well when it's working correctly. I only had one issue with the machine and after the community on Facebook and uh, reaching out to the company, I, I was able to resolve that within a day. So it was more of my error than anything, but like the community and the customer service were absolutely wonderful and they were able to help me fix my machine and it runs very well exactly how I want it to work. The one thing I like about the G Sender program is that it tells you exactly when you need to service your machine. So after you run a whole bunch of things, it'll say, hey, you're at so many hours, you should really tighten your, your screws and make sure that everything is, is nice and snug and everything like that. I really enjoy that because I probably would put off maintenance until the next project. Uh, but the fact that it reminds you that you need to do those things is a, a, a nice little touch that G Sender has built into the program and I, I will maintain it that way because they tell me to. I do have the uh, three-point touch plate, which is really nice for small bits. The only problem that I've ever had with it, and maybe it's a human error, and I'm not gonna be able to find it here. Uh, here it is. 
I bought the beginner kit and it comes with it comes with a surfacing bit and this surfacing bit is a little bit wider and I found that it is not accurate when you're using this three point touch because got some dust on there because it's not it's it's wider than that small touch plate so i don't use it the three point access i don't use that maybe i'm saying it wrong four points i don't use it for that i just use it uh the z or actually no i don't i use the paper method so when i am using the surfacing bit i just go down with the paper and then I zero out from there. When we have any kind of bit that has a point, uh, the machine works quite well. It works amazingly well, very accurate, very on point in terms of where the bit is. In terms of software, I use Easel because it's free. For right now, for the very beginner mode that I'm in, I use Easel. Uh, it is the easiest, they, they advertise that they're the easiest program to learn, and it is very easy. It's not difficult to figure out. The only things that I would like from the Pro Edition are small cutting differences, like there's a surfacing, and then there's a fine tune bit that you can program into your, your G-code, and then also like the ramping, is supposed to save on your tools. That would be nice. Things like tiling and having your bits saved in the program would be nice. But with the limited jobs that I've been doing right now, I don't need the pro version. If there's a font that I need, I can use Adobe Illustrator or anything like that, and I have an account there that I can use any of those files, import them into Easel, and, and I've made a little bit of a workaround for having to pay for the Pro Edition. So I use Easel, I haven't needed anything more than that, and the software seems to be perfectly fine. I have one complaint about this machine, and it's not really the machine or manufacturer's fault. I don't like the dust shoe collector and you can see that mine's beat up. It's 3D printed and I, I actually it's it's design is wonderful. It sticks to the side but I was so adamant on using these T-Tracks because I don't have any consumables that way. And every time I'd, I'd get to a part, it would hit one of my, my little braces or brackets, and then it would just slightly move off of this rail, and it, the bit would get it, and the bit has chewed up the whole so i've i've tuck taped it and it still works perfectly fine it's hideous looking and one day if i hit another bit it's it's going to be destroyed the amazing thing about this company and the community that they have is if you go on their website if i want to i can download this and i can go to the school and i can print off a new one. So I would say that that complaint has already been solved because they've found a way for me to fix my own problem by printing off a new one. If I want to, it's 70 some dollars, I believe, to buy a new one. And then I'll have to do any of the messing around with 3D printing. But the fact that they give you options to 3D print it is pretty amazing. Uh, that they give that away to you for free. So in the end, why do I like this machine? One, 
I liked the price. I liked the fact that I could build it myself, which means the price is lower. I like the fact that you can design and build your table any which way. There are so many amazing ideas on the internet to build a better table than what I have, but it's completely customizable to what you want. I like the, the functionality of the machine. It works quite well. I just use the router for everything that I want to cut. I've cut everything from MDF to plywood to uh, hardwoods. So I, I've cut most wood, uh, well, all wood, and I haven't cut any plastics or acrylic or anything like that yet, just because I haven't come across that. I would say the parts are all very well engineered. To put everything together was not that difficult. The instructions and YouTube videos, the extra parts that they put in every single package, there, there's extra parts everywhere just in case you drop a part or, or you're losing one. I did this at the school and uh, I did it over a few weeks. So like every time I came back, I'm like, oh, what am I doing again? They have extra things so that if you set something down like that I do often and then you walk away and you forget where you put it, they've got you covered. I loved their customer support. They responded immediately to my email. They found the problem. They instructed me how to fix it and it was fixed. If you were manufacturing all day long every day, I might go with the Atmill. Uh, it seems to be a beefier, better machine. But for a hobbyist, especially for a beginner, I would say that I have more machine than I can handle. The size is probably as big as I'd ever need. And if I wanted something bigger, I could tile or tiling or whatever you want to call it. And I could just move the piece and cut bigger pieces that way. I haven't needed any of those features yet, but that option is there with this machine that I could easily do that. If you go on their website and you go on their YouTube channel, there are videos after videos of people who have done amazing things with this machine. They mass produce uh, pieces with this machine. They're able to um, cut, then add the laser and laser in something. So the possibilities are quite endless with this machine. It's very exciting to have in order to make things in the future. I think that's all I want to say about this machine. I apologize earlier, my video that said that I had regretted buying the machine. Not the machine, I regretted running out of time and not being able to fully see my vision of finishing a kitchen build with this machine I believe it could do it quite well. I believe that if you had lots of time, you could easily build your kitchen with this machine. I just ran out of time. So the machine is awesome. I highly recommend it to purchase if you're a, a newbie like myself. And even if you're not, I don't. I haven't heard anybody complain too much about this machine on the internet. Actually, I haven't come across anything. So here is my endorsement for this. Okay, so that is my video for this week. Next week, I hope to get back in there making something, a little back to school project that I'm working on that I'm quite excited about that I will use the CNC machine for. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, do all those wonderful things. I really appreciate all your comments. Thank you so much. Have a great week.